Hey everyone, what's up? Ryan Vintage Viking here, and I wanted to go over with you guys what I'm going to be reading in October, because it's spooky season, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know, pumpkin spice latte season, or whatever. You know, it's Halloween, time to read scary books, that kind of thing. So, I have a list of ones that I had wanted to read, and I kind of set them aside thinking this is what I'm going to read during the month of October. I made a couple shorts about it, things like that. But I wanted to uh, maybe pick a few of those and then give some suggestions, and you guys can maybe pick a couple of them for me. I got some new books in that I kind of want to swap out for some other ones, and so let's go through that today, all right? Okay, so there's a few that I'm for sure wanting to read during the month of October. And I've been reading on average maybe 12 to 15 books during the month, depending on the size of the book, depending on how much time I have. A lot of variables, you know, that get involved with that. So um, I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot for 15. We'll see what we get, you know. So these are ones that I know for sure I want to read uh, in October. And so um, these ones are already on my list, all right? First one is Little People by John Christopher. I've been wanting to read this one for a while. It is kind of the forefront of the paperback from hell book. So I kind of, I think it's important. That one should be on the list. Uh, it's one that I've been dying to read anyway. I don't have the paperback version, which I want to get someday, but I do have at least a, a copy of it that I can read. If you don't know on the paperback from hell book, this book right here, Little People, here it is on the back, right there, this guy. And that cover is way better than the cover I have, but the book is supposed to be pretty fun too. So, I, you know, not just for the cover, I actually want to read it. So that's on my list. I'll set this aside. I might have more on this list. Actually, I want to read this whole thing too, to be honest. I might I might just put this by my bedside and read it little bits at a time. All right, next one up. I don't know really anything about this. I just found it and it looks freaking cool. I'm going to read it, what it says on the back. Follow the rabbit. Bill Wise has blood in his past, so he turns to horror films to wipe it clean. Sounds good. All right. Jamie Stein has felt the betrayal of death, so she too takes refuge in the on-screen deaths of others. Now Bill, Jamie, and 17 other horror-loving teens have gathered at Rabbit in Red Studios the brainchild of eccentric horror producer J.B. Bell for the terror-filled, blood-drenched contest of their lives. J.B. has presented this competition as a race between the best of the best that will reward the winners with cash, internships, and a career making the movies they love. But things aren't always as they seem as at Rabbit and Red, and soon life starts to imitate art. Will, Bill, and Jamie or oh, Will, Bill, and Jamie, there's, that threw me off. Will Bill and Jamie be strong enough to confront real horror to save their friends? Or will they all fall victim to JB's twisted plans? Sounds pretty cool. So that one's on my list. This is for the month of October. Um, I have at least, uh, I've, I've read uh, several Kathy Kojers recently, and this is another one that is highly, highly, highly recommended. Uh, so this is, I think, her third book that she wrote, Cypher, then Bad Brains, which both of those I've read, and Skin is the next one. So this one's on my list. I do want to find a copy of this book where it's just a, it's like a thumbprint on the cover and it's like got blood, uh, partially, you know, uh, blood or it's mixed with red or something. I can't remember. But uh, this one is, is my next Cafe Kojo one that I want to read and I'm pretty excited for it. Um, I honestly don't know what it's about and I went into both Cypher and I went into Bad Brains not knowing anything about them and I'm, I want to go into this one not knowing anything about it so those three plus maybe paperbacks from hell are on the list and then I also want to read both Clown in a Cornfield and Clown in a Cornfield 2. These ones have been on my list for a while. Uh, these are written by Adam Caesar uh, and he is, uh, you, most of you probably know him on YouTube, does um, lots of YouTube stuff. Uh, all 
author's many other books. But I just found out, uh, I was watching his latest video uh, that was out a little while ago, and Clown in a Cornfield is being picked up as a movie. So, um, and the director of Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which if you haven't seen is a phenomenal movie, I love that movie, um, is going to direct the film. Uh, or maybe, yeah, I think it was the director. But anyways, these two are on my list. Um, I'm pretty excited to read these. Uh, I've been wanting to read them for a while, and I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go back to back on them uh, and read one right after the other. And he has part three coming out uh, soon. So excited for that. So those are ones that I want to for sure. Now I also have, um, I have a few others that I've got recently and a few that I've wanted to read for a while. So let me grab those. So one of the ones I've been wanting to read for a while also is Killer. So I have the remade Paperback from Hell uh, book, Killer. I don't know if it's on that one, on the cover, I don't remember. Um, and then I have the original hardcover as well. Um, so I think I, think I wanna add this one to the list and uh, put it on there for October. Um, so I'm gonna tentatively put that one there. Locust is another one that I wanted to add to the list. So this one has been on my um, on my kind of TBR lookout list for quite a while. So that's one option there. Right now I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need, uh, let's say, nine more. So I'm going to go ahead and add Locust. Slugs is another one. Sean Hudson. I read the Rats uh, trilogy um, not too long ago and so I'm looking forward to reading Slugs plus uh, Breeding Ground which is the one after it. So I think I'm going to add that one also. Um, I have Pin by Andrew Niederman which I heard was uh, pretty phenomenal also. Look at that peekaboo cover is a trip. If you didn't know peekaboo cover was uh, something my daughter came up with. We were going through books and she she didn't know what to call them so she called it a peekaboo cover and I think that is exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a peekaboo. So um, that is a peekaboo covered pin. I think that one's going on the list. One of the other ones that I've got recently um, is Bloodworm and this is a pretty rare one as well. I definitely want to read this one so I'm just going to go ahead and add that one. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, five more. You tell me which five, all right? And I'm going to go through these ones, and then I'm going to go through the books that I just got, and you can let me know. Slither by John Halkin. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a while. Also, all of these I've been wanting to read for a while. I keep saying that over and over again. Uh, so this says, from his first terrifying bloody encounter with them, Matt Parker knew they were lethal to the human race. Out of the murky sewers, they suddenly attacked, snapping, biting, ripping at his flesh. After the first sensation died down, the newspapers lost interest. The experts dismissed them as no more, no more dangerous than ferrets. People started to forget. But Matt knew different. All the time they were growing in size and numbers, and they preyed on human flesh. For when they returned, slithering out of village ponds and swimming pools, even bath pipes, the fate of the population was sealed, and there was no more horrifying way to die. Slither. That sounds pretty good. So there's that possibility. Ooh, I really want to read this one. I think I think I have to add this one. Night of the Living Dead. Oh, I gotta read this one. By John Russo, based on the screenplay of George Romero. I mean, I have to add that, right? That's got to be on October Fright Fest, whatever you want to call it, uh, TBR, you know? Yeah, you agree? I think if you agree, add that one. Come on. You guys are picking the last five. Throw that one on there for me. Um, Totem by David Morrell. I just love this cover. It's fantastic. Um, it is waiting, and while it waits, it grows stronger, deadlier, and soon they will run screaming for their lives. Oh, and there's something in there. Surprise! This one I got a couple days ago, or a week ago or so. Pottersfield, Wyoming. 
turn this around the other way. Pottersfield, Wyoming, a small Western town like hundreds of others. Even the inter. Am I okay? Am I, am I read? I do speak English. Just I swear I do. Pottersfield, Wyoming, a small Western town like hundreds of others. Even the incidents that started that midsummer's night seemed routine. The dead hitchhiker, victim of a hit and run, the coroner's heart attack, the drunk, dead in the culvert, his face destroyed. Slowly, the routine began to twist to unexplainable horror. As slowly, under the searchlight rays of the two full moon, it walked. Wow, sounds pretty good. All right, so there's those three to choose from. Another paperback from hell, The Spirit by Thomas Page. This one is, uh, says, it has many names, Bigfoot, Yeti, Sasquatch, but whatever it is, it's out there in the woods and leaving a trail of blood and severed heads behind it. For John Moon, a half-mad Indian, it is a spirit that holds the key to his inner self. He worships its power and he'll kill to protect it. Desperate, exhausted, half-starved, Moon will follow it wherever it goes. For Raymond Jason, killing it has become an obsession. He was the only survivor of a hunting trip to the Rockies where the hunters became the monster's prey. Now he is determined to track the creature down and destroy it. But when the two men finally corner their quarry, they set loose a flood of terror and destruction that may leave no survivors. The spirit. Kind of sounds like... Uh, the one I read recently, can't think of the name of it right now. Someone will know. It's very infamous on this channel. I've only talked about it like a hundred times. The book I read recently about the crazy ice killers. All right, so there's there's four you can choose from. The Nest by Gregory Douglas, also another well-known paperback from hell. Uh, this one just says, it was, a, it was just an ordinary garbage dump on peaceful Cape Cod. No one ever imagined that conditions were perfect for multiple breeding. That it was, a, it was a warm womb. Fetid, moist, and with food so plentiful that everything crawling, creeping, and slithering could gorge to satiation. Then the change in poison control was made and the huge mutants began to leave their nest in search of human flesh. The nest. Sounds good, too. Woo! So many to choose from. Uh, I don't know if I can read this one without reading the first one, but I want to anyway. <laughs> the City, Richard Haig. When the hogs of hell come to town. The horror pigs from the farm are back and hungrier than ever for human prey. So the first one's called The Farm. It was the greatest agricultural show ever held. One of the world's biggest stadiums was barely large enough to host it. And one of the star attractions was the enclosure holding the massive humped buckland white pigs with their huge tusks evil red eyes and narrow murderous snouts with their well-earned reputation for lethal viciousness they were truly creatures out of some shrieking nightmare safely penned behind stout bars they gave the spectators a delicious cheap thrill of safe terror but then the pigs broke loose and so did all hell the city Continues the terrifying story of nature gone berserk that started in the farm. Gut-crunching, bone-grinding horror returns to seize your soul. Sounds good to me. All right. Fangs. William Dobson. Where would death strike next? In the bedroom of a great act actress wrestling with her private demons of drink and desire? In the midst of an orgy of sex and drugs as a rock superstar took his pleasure from others' pain. In the heavily guarded suite of, a, of an Arab oil sheik and his treasured young son. In the private paradise of a newlywed couple learning how to love. The most vicious killer creature in the world, an incredibly large and deadly king co cobra, was loose in the human jungle of a great city, and the victims that it lusted for were everywhere fangs they'll close around you sounds pretty good also um other ones like this the ants bats out of hell killer crabs rattlers and the cats i have a few of those all right orca okay this is a pretty well-known one as well by arthur herzog author of the swarm 
Orca, the killer whale, is one of the most intelligent creatures in the universe. He hunts in packs, like a wolf. Incredibly, he is the only animal other than the man who kills for revenge. He has one mate, and if she is harmed by man, he will hunt down that person with a relentless, terrible vengeance across seas, across time, across all obstacles. Orca. All right, so there's a few to choose from so far. All right, The Forgotten, Stephen George. The Citadel was supposed to be the safest possible place to live. No crime, no worries. A haven for those fleeing the dangers of city life. But even the Citadel offered no protection against the blood-hungry horror that dwelled in its depths. Only 10-year-old Mark Sullivan knew about the creature that stalked the building's secret shadows. It talked to him, called him friend, begged him to unlock the grate that imprisoned it underground. And though Mark knew he should stay away he was no match for the deadly call of the forgotten there is no place to hide all right so there's there's some options you tell me pick pick five out of this lot here and i'm going to give you a couple more to choose from though really quick i'm going to go ahead and open some really quick since uh since i just did a unboxing video and I got more in today. I'm going to go ahead and just open these bad boys up really fast. And we'll see what we got. All right, are you ready? A couple more that I got in the mail today. We'll see if any of them will fit the criteria for October. We'll find out. So first one. All right. Well, I can't read this one yet because I got some other ones I have to read. The Businessman by Thomas Dish. So this is part of a three-part series. So uh, I want to make sure I'm reading those ones correctly. I love Dish, as you know, um, and so I'm going to add that to that collection. So that one's off the table for now, maybe November. All right, let's see. Oh, there's two in this one. Ooh, okay. I don't really know about this one, but it says it is as terif in the terrifying tradition of Silence of the Lambs. This is Dying Breath by Robert Walker, is that right? Yeah, Robert Walker. And they covered the uh, synopsis with a sticker, so <laughs> can't really read it. Um, looks like some killer going around strangling people or something. That's what it looks like so far on the back. But that's exciting. I think that was a paperback from hell, if I remember right. Okay, there's another one in this bag. Oh, okay. Another dish. Oh, man, I love dish. So good. This is science fiction, though, so this one's not going to fit for this month. Uh, but this is Echo Around His Bones. Echo Around His Bones. And this is, um, well, maybe this would lean into a little bit of horror. Genocides kind of does. It's not crazy horrific, but kind of dabbles or walks on the line. Um, this one says, the ghosts within are men, the hell without are earth. The year is 1990. The universe has witnessed the ultimate invention, a steel vault in which a man and matter may be sent from Earth to Mars and back again. But there is a flaw in this invention, a deadly flaw which can separate man from his very self, which can send his spirit brother into a savage half-world where the laws of order have been inverted, and where the only form of nourishment is the flesh of those like him. Okay, kind of sounds a little horrific, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll throw that one in there. This is one of his first uh, novels that he wrote, though. So I'm excited for that. All right, one more, two more bags, sorry. Oh, well, I've already read this. I bought this one for a reason. This one came with uh, something special. So it is The Cypher by Kathy Kojo. If you haven't read it um, and you're a reader of horror, I highly, highly, highly recommend this one. This one came with something really cool. It came with a cipher sticker. And I think this was specially made for like some book signing event or something. And then it came with this um, this uh, list of what happened at that bookstore or that book event. Other books that were available or other authors that were there. Um, so, or the thing, oh, the things that you got at 2020 Nightworms Creep It Real. Okay, do we have any of these kind of events? Man, we should have some events like this. 
or just kind of get a bunch of people together, do a bunch of lives or something. I don't know, hang out, creep it out. But the reason I got this one is signed by Kathy Cook. So that's kind of exciting. And that's like, uh, that's like a sticker that's stuck on there that's signed. So uh, I will be selling my other copy and I'll keep this one. So you guys have a chance to get the cipher from me on the next Whatnot show. That's exciting. All right, last book. Oh, this is in there. Like, really? Oh, it's, it is a paperback from Hell Reprint. You can see it. Jeez. Okay. I, I'm only looking at the back. I can't see the front yet. Are you ready? Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, Stage Fright, Garrett Boatman. Man, terrible sticker placement here. All right. And who's selling that for 99 cents? Where can I buy these freaking books for 99 cents? Holy cow. All right. Out of the dark. Oh, there's another sticker. Doggone it. How many stickers do you need? Let me try and get this one off so I can read it. Because I, I actually don't know what this is about. I know uh, it's very hard to come by the original book. I think the original one's close to 100 bucks at least on eBay. Somewhere around there. Or maybe 125 so, out of the darkness of the fetid Hudson River, the undead rose to eat their victims alive. Horror movie monsters burst from late night TV screens to turn their viewers into victims. Biker gangs of decomposing corpses rode the highways of America on the hunt for unsuspecting motorists. Take a front seat in the baddest nightmare in town. Superstar Izzy Stark has the power to make your dreams and nightmares come true. He's the true master of disaster, the guru of gore, the doctor of doom, the duke of death and destruction, and you can't escape this command performance. Sounds pretty freaking cool. All right, so there's the list. I'll move this Kathy Koja one, and I'll rerun these by you again so you can, you can pick. Pick five of these bad boys for me. Stage Fright. Dying Breath. The Forgotten, Orca, Fangs, The City, The Nest, The Spirit, <laughs> The Totem, The Night of the Living Dead, The Sl no, just Slither. All right, which one of those? You tell me which ones you think. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, a, I'm probably gonna go through these ones: Bloodworm, uh, Pin, Slugs, Locust, Killer, and then for sure these other ones. So, Clown in a Cornfield one and two, Skin, Rabbit in Red. And the little people. All right. So you guys let me know. What do you think? Which one should I read? That's my options. Well, actually, I got a lot of options. You can, if you see something else or you know that I have something else that you think I should read in place of one of those, feel free to throw it in there also. Or you're like, dude, you got to read this. You got to read this for Halloween. And I will buy it if I need to. So um, as always, appreciate you guys being here. And I will uh, see you in the comments. Catch you next time.